Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Uh, one correction, I was the director of the ASD postgraduate courses. My term expired, but I'm still involved in this activity of our European Association. It's my great pleasure and privilege to be here. It's not my first time at all at the conference organized by my Indian uh, friends, and it's not my first talk here. Uh, and I'm pleased to conclude this session with uh, giving you some insight into the future, because we are, well, future which has just started, but I believe this will be a much longer, much wider used practice than we are using it today, which is combining the inject injectables, combining insulin and GLP-1 receptor analogs. Uh, this concept has been introduced not so much recently uh, with uh, the main uh, force with uh, making a GLP-1. The first initiated injectable came from ASD and ADA consensus in 2019, uh, 20, late 20, 2018 and the early 2019. This is where we were told that the first injectable, and it still is the recommendation I show it, should be GLP-1 receptor analog. And at that time, I must say, we, we listened to it with a bit of hesitation because of the price, first of all. We, found, we, we thought that, in general, many diabetologists, that you cannot really recommend using the first injectable, the drug, which is so much more expensive than the other injectable, which is insulin. Insulin still is expensive, but not as much uh, as GLP-1, and in many countries it's available almost free or free. Well, in USA it's more expensive, but still GLP-1s uh, are not so cheap. In time, uh, this notion appeared to be right one, because this is what we are aiming for. We would be happy to use GLP-1 uh, much, much earlier in the course of the disease. But then the time comes when we want to inject and combine two things, and this is my uh, short presentation will be about. Why combining drugs is becoming a must in diabetes treatment? For years, we have been taught to follow uh, the pattern which is described here in this figure, just to start with one oral agent, add another, add the third one, and then move to adding insulin. And here, this is the paper, the data comes largely from the two papers published by Kamlesh Kunti, whom you all will know very well. Uh, this time period between intensification, the therapy, adding uh, additional agents is just too long. We treat to failure, uh, we now call it clinical inertia, and it's not just our thought. Uh, some thought could be attributed, although I don't like saying this, uh, to the patients, because also the patients are not very happy about uh, therapy being intensified because that means that they failed uh, or they are much more sick, the disease is much more advanced, complications are near. So we, we do not have an ally in many patients here as well. So if we do like this, we allow patients to be exposed to hyperglycemia for much longer time than necessary. Then, if we look at how a single injectable work, this is the, the, the analysis on a huge number of patients. The one from USA come from 60,000 patients, the one from UK uh, from the cohort of over 20,000 patients. And if you look at those three colored curves, the purple one is the one with patients with HbA1c over 9, uh, at the moment of initiation, any injectable, and the top one, the dark one, is the, are the patients with HbA1c between 7 and 8. The higher the HbA1c once we start insulin or GLP-1, the less effective we are. So the longer we wait with oral agents, the higher the HbA1c, and then if we start with one single injectable, it also doesn't work as it should. So this is more or less the rationale uh, if we talk about combining oral agents early, metformin and SGLT2 inhibitor, metformin and DP4 inhibitor, metformin in DP4 inhibitor and SGLT2 inhibitor, why not talk about combining injectables? And now we have also two preparations which are uh, 
com, com, which contain those two, GLP-1 and insulin, uh, they are not widely available everywhere, but they will be coming. They have just arrived. One of them arrived in my country. They've been present in Western Europe and US for some time, six, seven years. So we will gain experience. And what we can learn from the studies, this is apparently a very convenient solution. This is also shown and confirmed by real-world data. This paper compares the data three cohorts. The cohort one, people initiated on combined injectable therapy, cohort two and three on a single GLP-1 or just uh, insulin. And if you look at the long-term effects, it's a one-year effect, the patients from cohort one who were started on both GLP-1s and insulin were just doing better, achieving better results. It's no-brainer. This should not surprise us. Using two drugs usually should be more effective than using just one drug. And then combining anything with insulin, which will lead to decrease in insulin dose. The previous lectures were about how wonderful it is to use insulin, and I fully agree. A diabetologist is defined sometimes that this is a doctor who uses insulin therapy on an everyday basis. However, we know that the higher the dose, the side effects are more likely. And this is what uh, we are dealing with. This is the typical patient with type 2 diabetes from my part of the world uh, with abdominal obesity and huge insulin resistance, but obese. So whatever we do to make them more obese does not make them happy and does not improve their uh, life, their health. And this is what insulin basically does. It's very difficult not to gain weight on insulin. And if we look at the pathways leading to diabetes, uh, which we now can count uh, here, it's eight or nine, we can count them over 14 uh, in, in most recent publications. Uh, this is a very nice picture, which might be uh, contradicted or helped by using those two agents, insulin and GLP-1. Insulin actually acts in a much narrower way than GLP-1. GLP-1 action is much more complex and it affects much many more organs, so the effects also should be better. So the, there is no contraindication to use these two agents together from pathophysiology point of view. Uh, the only problem is accessibility and the price. GLP-1s are difficult to get in any form anywhere in the world now because the demand is much, much higher than the supply. And if we look at the, this ADASD recommendation, they still maintain, this is the latest edition from September last year, they still maintain this uh, concept that, okay, Look, it, it says about place of insulin, but the first sentence is, if a patient is not on GLP-1, please consider using it. So apparently, uh, there might be better solutions than insulin, which sounds very surprising at a diabetes conference and for a diabetologist, but that might be the case. And the other thing is that if we look again at the data and at our patients, GLP-1 apparently offers the same strength in lowering blood glucose like insulin, minus side effects, minus weight gain, and minus hypoglycemia. And I guess it's only the price and availability and 100 years of tradition which stops us from using GLP-1s as widely as we should, especially that now we can use it in preparations offered once weekly. So my talk is not sponsored by anyone. There are two producers of uh, combined uh, preparations and I, the rest of my talk I will concentrate on it because this is the new thing we could use, a uh, very user-friendly uh, and uh, apparently a very original solution from the pharmacokinetic point of view as well. One drug is offered by Sanofi, it's called Soliqua, in my country, Soliqua, uh, where lixisenatide, lesser known GLP-1 receptor analog, is combined with glargin, and it is offered widely in two different pens, as you can see here. One pen contains uh, 30 units, uh, 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 sorry, one pen contains the solution, two units, for, uh, two units of glargin, and uh, with one microgram of lixisenatide, the other one, the green one, or as they like to say, the olive one, uh, contains three to one, three units per one milligram of lixisenatide. These two proportions and two pens may seem to make treatment awkward, but this is all just to comply with the patient needs. The patient who has high requirement for insulin should use a green pen. 
The starting is, point is easy. You titrate, we titrate the dose according to insulin, not GLP-1, and we start with 10 units and slowly increase as normal you would do with any insulin. And the effect I want to show you from two studies. One, the most easy way to initiate this type of preparation are the patients who fail on oral agents. They start on lixisenatate and glargin in one pen, uh, and see what happens. This is the study which compared three groups of patients, lixisenatide and metformin, lix uh, glargin and metformin, and uh, those combination. And the effect were, as we could expect, but very convincing at the same time. HbA1c reduction is the greatest when we use insulin and lixisenatide together. The reason for that, it's not just that this combination might be a little bit more powerful, but, and we use less insulin than in glargin only cohort. But the reason for that is that the number, that the risk of weight gain, the weight gain I will show you is just not uh, occurring, and the same hypoglycemia are not increasing. So by adding GLP-1 to insulin, we take away or at least decrease significantly side effects of insulin, but we do not lose anything on the strength on hyperglycemia. And that's basically the philosophy of combining these two agents. So here we see the greatest uh, HbA1c reduction, and the, it's greater in the postprandial uh, part of the of, uh, hyperglycemia -gly of glycemia profile because of its senatide. Fasting uh, lowering is similar as the group as in the group using glargin only. Uh, if we look at the target, how many patients reached the target, the highest number was in combination therapy. But look here, with weight change, we have basically no minimal reduction, but basically no weight change, By and we initiated insulin therapy. And with hypoglycemia, we do not have greater uh, number of hyperglycemia than using glargin alone. So that's more or less you can think that this is also the way insulin analogs were introduced. Insulin, each insulin is equally powerful. We cannot say that once you, one insulin is stronger than the other. Once insulin molecule binds to its receptor, the effect will always be the same. But we achieve better results with analogs because we decrease the risk of hypoglycemia and patients are more eager to achieve the target dose of insulin. We just listened here, heard in the previous lectures how important is the titration. So analogs allow us to get better titration because of lower risk of uh, hypoglycemia, and the same thing more or less happens here. If we look at the study, uh, if we look at the patients on different, uh, from different level of HbA1c, I want you to look at the middle graph. Patients with HbA1c over 9%, when they used combined uh, injectable therapy, twice as many achieved the target. So the efficacy is actually quite uh, impressive. And if we take the patients who are using, uh, who were initiated uh, with this combination therapy after glargin, so we're not intensifying oral therapy, we are intensifying already insulin therapy, just look here. Again, better results with HbA1c reduction, and it's twice as uh, better, twice as good as achieved only with intensification of glargin. Uh, again, no weight gain, a little decrease, and no increase in hypoglycemia. Uh, also, the pattern is similar in uh, what was reduced in the glucose profile, more postprandial part than the fasting one here, no change. Glargin is as effective in this part, whether patient, patients were treated only with glargin or in combination. So that's, I guess it's it's quite convincing. I'm looking forward to have my own experience. We've started, we had Suliqua arrived in Poland with the beginning of this year. I do have uh, first patients on it, not much feedback yet, but I do expect to, to have the similar results. And this is just an example of what we, we can achieve once we move patients from MDI to combined injectable therapy. And the figure on the right shows you that not just weight gain is not occurring, but a weight loss, some a little weight loss is, might be also achieved. So to finally, what are the common recommendations? Uh, if you we look at the recent papers written by the, the authors of the studies with these drugs, they look they they say clearly. If you look here, 
And they recommend this combination FRC, fixed ratio dose, uh, fixed ratio combinations, two of them, the glutagriviraglutide by Novo and lixisenatide with uh, glargine from Sanofi, they could be considered as a first injectable therapy. And I'm quite convinced that in many patients that would be a better solution than just starting them on insulin, especially in those who are really obese and we are afraid and the patient is afraid of gaining weight, this probably should be the first one patients that will achieve this treatment from us. If someone is not so much obese, we may consider insulin as well. But here, that's much better. We also may find some graphs, figures showing how to move from oral agents or from various insulin regimens here to combination therapy. Uh, the one on the left is about oral agents. It's pretty straightforward. The only question is that if we start GLP-1 receptor analog together with insulin, probably we should discontinue DPP-4 inhibitor. And the titration uh, recommendation for both preparations is similar. We move by two units up or two units down uh, or remain at the same level regardless of the preparation. So if anything is available uh, where you live or work, the similar pattern of action from our side should be used. So to conclude, I guess there is something interesting in this combination. As I said, I would be happy to share uh, my experience to a greater extent, but maybe next year if I'm uh, able at any, to do it at any conference in India. But I guess your experience will increase as well because these drugs will be available everywhere, at least what the companies say. So efficacy is basically the same as desired, as with insulin. We can achieve any glucose level with insulin. The question is at what expense? At what expense of hypoglycemia and weight gain? Here, this risk is minimized. It's pretty user-friendly. We give two drugs in one shot, so this is what patients like. Uh, and it also improved adherence. The, another benefit of combination uh, drugs, and you have them plenty here in India in terms of oral, uh, oral agents, is that if a patient is taking two or three drugs separately and is run, runs out of one of them, very rarely goes to the doctor or to the pharmacy for uh, supply of this one drug. He still has another one or two other ones. Uh, in these cases, when the drug is run out, the patient has to go to pharmacy or a doctor because he will remain with any, without any drug. And it's a good match in terms of pathophysiology, as I showed you. At least we are combating the risk of increasing weight in these patients. Thank you very much 